We brought his best friend into the bedroom for him but when my husband suggested I continue without him, our marriage took a dark turn was this a test, or the beginning of the end? I'm 29 years old and my husband Jake is 34. We've always prided ourselves on having an adventurous sex life. From the beginning of our relationship, we've been open to exploring different facets of our sexuality, always prioritizing communication and mutual consent. Our trust and openness have been the cornerstones of our relationship, allowing us to venture into areas that many couples might find intimidating. One of the ways we've spiced things up over the years is by inviting others into our bedroom. Threesomes have been an occasional but thrilling part of our sexual repertoire. Until recently, these encounters have always involved female partners. We've found these experiences to be exhilarating and bonding. Each one brought us closer, reinforcing our trust and connection. Our last threesome, however, was different. It involved Jake's friend, Mark who is 32. This was our first time bringing a male partner into the mix, and it added a new dynamic to our usual adventures. I won't lie, the experience was electrifying. The chemistry between Mark and me was palpable, and it was clear from the start that we were very into each other. The night began with drinks and laughter. The atmosphere was relaxed and comfortable, thanks to the familiarity we all shared. Jake and Mark had been friends for years, and I'd gotten to know Mark well through various social gatherings. There was a natural ease between us which made the transition to more intimate activities smooth and unforced. As the night progressed, we moved from the living room to the bedroom. The initial nervousness I felt dissipated quickly as we started to engage. There was an intensity between Mark and me that I hadn't anticipated. He was attentive, his touch igniting sensations that were both new and exciting. Jake seemed to be enjoying himself too, watching us and joining in at intervals. The whole experience felt surreal, almost like we were crossing into uncharted territory together. The threesome itself was incredible. I experienced a level of pleasure that that took me by surprise. Mark said and did things that were different from what Jake would typically do. It was like he instinctively knew how to push my buttons in ways that left me breathless. I reached climax three times that night, each one more intense than the last. I found myself getting lost in the moment, savoring every touch and sensation. In the days following, I couldn't shake the memories of that night. Despite the incredible physical experience, I didn't think much of it beyond being a great adventure. I believed that it was a one-time event, something to be enjoyed and then left in the past. Jake and I didn't talk about it much, which I took as a sign that we were both content to let it be what it was, a thrilling but isolated experience. However, things took an unexpected turn about a week later when Mark came over for drinks. We were all sitting in the living room reminiscing about old times when Jake suddenly suggested you two should have made love without me. I nearly choked on my drink. I laughed it off at first, thinking he must be joking, but the serious look on his face told me otherwise. I told him I wasn't interested in doing that, hoping to shut down the conversation quickly. Jake dropped the subject, but only until Mark left. Once we were alone, he brought it up again. He insisted that he had seen a connection between Mark and me that he felt we should explore. He even suggested that if I had found something good with Mark, I shouldn't give it up. His persistence baffled me. I reiterated that I wasn't going to sleep with Mark again. Jake seemed convinced that I would change my mind eventually and told me that he was okay with it as long as I was honest with him about it. His insistence left me feeling confused and uneasy. That night marked the beginning of a period of inner turmoil and reflection for me. I was caught between the memories of the incredible night with Mark and my commitment to Jake the experience had been enjoyable. But it wasn't something I wanted to pursue outside the context of our mutual exploration. I couldn't understand why Jake was pushing for it, and his pressure made me question the dynamics of our relationship in ways I hadn't before. In the days that followed, Mark began texting me, expressing his interest in continuing our connection. Despite the temptation, I knew deep down that pursuing anything further with him would be a mistake. I declined his offers, but his persistence and Jake's unusual encouragement left me feeling conflicted and uncertain about the future. The evening when Jake suggested that Mark and I should make love without him started off like any other casual gathering. It was a Friday night, and the three of us were lounging in the living room, sipping on drinks and reminiscing about old times. The atmosphere was relaxed and laughter flowed freely as we recounted amusing stories from our past. Mark had come over for drinks and there was a comfortable familiarity in the air. The memory of our recent threesome lingered, but I hadn't given it much thought beyond the initial thrill. It was an adventure, something Jake and I had done together and I assumed it was now a part of our past experiences. We were halfway through our second round of drinks when Jake, out of nowhere, suggested, you two should have sex without me. The words hung in the air, startlingly clear despite the casual tone in which he spoke them. I nearly choked on my drink, my eyes widening in shock. I glanced at Mark, who seemed equally taken aback, and then back at Jake, hoping to see some sign that he was joking. But Jake's expression was completely serious. He met my gaze with a steady look, as if he was suggesting something as mundane as ordering takeout for dinner. I'm serious, he said, his voice calm and measured. You two had such a great connection during the threesome. I think you should explore that. My mind raced, trying to process what he had just said. This was not something we had ever discussed or even hinted at. Our threesomes had always been about mutual enjoyment and exploration with clear boundaries and communication. The idea of me being with Mark without Jake's presence was completely outside the realm of what I had ever considered. I don't think that's a good idea, I replied, trying to keep my voice steady despite the shock. 
I forced a laugh, hoping to lighten the mood and steer the conversation away from this unexpected and uncomfortable topic. I mean, it was a one-time thing. I'm not interested in pursuing anything further. Jake didn't seem deterred by my refusal. If anything, he leaned forward, his eyes intent and unwavering. I saw the way you two connected, he said. It was different from anything I've seen between us. If you found something special, why not explore it? I could feel a knot forming in my stomach. Jake, I'm not going to sleep with Mark again, I said firmly. It was an amazing experience, but that's where it ends. I'm married to you, and I'm not interested in complicating things further. Mark, who had been silent up until now, finally spoke up. Jake, are you sure about this? He asked, a hint of disbelief in his voice. I mean, it was fun, but I don't want to cause any issues between you two. Jake turned to Mark and nodded. I appreciate that, but I think it could be good for all of us. I trust both of you, and I think this could bring something positive. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. My mind was a whirl of emotions, confusion, anger, and a creeping sense of betrayal. This was supposed to be a partnership, and Jake's insistence felt like a violation of the trust we had built. I needed to make it clear that this was not something I wanted. Jake, this isn't happening, I said, my voice firm and resolute. I love you, and I'm committed to you. I'm not interested in pursuing anything with Mark outside of what we did together. Please, just drop it. Jake sighed, leaning back in his chair. For a moment, I thought he might finally let it go, but then he spoke again, his tone softer but still insistent. I just want you to be happy, he said. And if being with Mark makes you happy, I'm okay with it. Just promise me you'll think about it. I stared at him, unable to comprehend why he was pushing this so hard. Jake, you're not listening to me, I said, frustration creeping into my voice. I don't want this. I'm happy with you. Can't we just move on and forget about it? Mark, sensing the tension, stood up. Maybe I should go, he said awkwardly. I don't want to be the cause of any trouble. Jake nodded, but as Mark left, he turned to me again. We'll talk about this later, he said, almost as if it were a given that I would eventually see things his way. The door closed behind Mark, and the silence in the room was deafening. I looked at Jake, searching his face for any sign of understanding or regret, but all I saw was determination. It was as if he had made up his mind and was simply waiting for me to come around. That night, I lay awake in bed, my mind racing. I couldn't understand why Jake was so insistent on this. Did he really believe that I would be happier with Mark? Or was there something else driving his persistence? The thought that he might be trying to push me away or test my loyalty gnawed at me. In the days that followed, Jake continued to bring up the idea in subtle ways, each time met with my firm refusal. His persistence only deepened my confusion and unease. The relationship dynamics had shifted and I wasn't sure how to navigate this new terrain. All I knew was that I had to stand my ground and make it clear that my loyalty and love were with Jake and I wasn't going to let anything or anyone come between us. The days following Jake's shocking proposal were tense. I couldn't shake the feeling of discomfort and confusion that his suggestion had left me with. Mark's visit a week after the threesome only added to the complexity of the situation. When Mark came over, the atmosphere was charged with an awkwardness that hadn't been there before. We sat in the living room trying to maintain the usual camaraderie, but there was an unspoken tension hanging in the air. Jake seemed oblivious, or perhaps he was pretending to be, as he laughed and joked as if nothing had changed. I, on the other hand, was hyper-aware of every glance and movement. As the evening wore on, I excused myself to the kitchen to get some space and gather my thoughts. While I was there, Mark followed me, his expression serious. Hey, about what Jake said the other night? He began, lowering his voice. Are you really okay with that? I shook my head. No, Mark, I'm not. I don't know why Jake is pushing this, but I told him I'm not interested in pursuing anything further. I'm committed to my marriage. Mark nodded, but there was a hint of something in his eyes. Disappointment, perhaps. I get it, he said. I just wanted to make sure we were on the same page. We returned to the living room, but the rest of the evening passed in a blur. When Mark finally left, I felt a wave of relief wash over me. I hope that was the end of it but it wasn't long before the text messages started. The first message came the next morning. Hey, I had a great time last night, just wanted to check in and see how you're doing. It seemed innocent enough, but I couldn't help but read into it, given the recent context. I replied politely, keeping the conversation light and casual, but as the days went on, Mark's messages became more frequent and more direct. I can't stop thinking about our time together. One message read, you were incredible. Would you ever consider seeing me alone? My heart raced as I read his words. The memory of our threesome lingered in my mind, and I couldn't deny that I had felt a strong connection with Mark, but this was different. This was stepping into territory that felt dangerous and wrong. I was married to Jake, and despite his strange encouragement, I knew in my heart that I didn't want to anything with Mark outside of our mutual experiences. Mark, I told you. I'm not interested in pursuing anything further, I texted back, trying to be firm but not hurtful. I'm committed to my husband. His response was quick. I understand, but I can't help how I feel. If you ever change your mind, just know that I'm here. The persistence in his messages unsettled me. Each time my phone buzzed with a new text, a mix of anxiety and temptation coursed through me. Mark was attractive, and the sex had been incredible, but I knew that acting on those feelings would only lead to complications and heartache. As the days turned into weeks, Mark continued to text me, often late at night. His messages became more insistent, 
pushing the boundaries of our conversations. You have no idea how much I want you, he wrote one night. I can't stop thinking about what we could have together. I felt trapped between my growing discomfort and the remnants of the attraction I had felt during our encounter. Each message chipped away at my resolve, but I knew I had to stay strong. I began to distance myself, responding less frequently and keeping my replies short and to the point. One night, after another particularly persistent message from Mark, I decided I needed to take a firmer stand. Mark, I need you to stop texting me like this, I wrote. I've made it clear that I'm not interested. Please respect my boundaries. There was a long pause before his response came through. I'm sorry if I've made you uncomfortable, he texted back. I'll back off. But if you ever change your mind, you know where to find me. Yet the temptation was undeniable. Mark continued to text me, his messages filled with playful banter and subtle hints at wanting more. Each notification brought a mix of excitement and dread. I enjoyed our conversations, the way he made me feel desired and special but I also knew that engaging with him was a slippery slope. Every time I replied, I felt like I was inching closer to a line I couldn't uncross. In my quieter moments, I found myself questioning everything. I wondered why Jake was so insistent on this arrangement. Did he truly believe it would make me happy? Or was there something else at play? The idea that he might be testing my loyalty or pushing me away gnawed at me. Our marriage had always been built on trust and mutual respect, but this situation was unraveling those foundations. There were moments of introspection where I tried to dissect my own feelings. One evening, as I sat alone in the living room, I let my thoughts drift back to the threesome. I recalled the way Mark looked at me, the intensity in his eyes. It wasn't just about the physical pleasure. There had been a connection, a spark that was hard to ignore. I tried to understand why that connection had such a strong pull on me. Was it because it was new and exciting? Or was there something lacking in my relationship with Jake that I had been too afraid to acknowledge? These thoughts weighed heavily on me, affecting my daily life. I found it hard to concentrate at work, my mind constantly wandering back to the what-ifs and maybes. At home the tension between Jake and me was palpable. We tried to go about our routines as usual, but there was an undercurrent of unresolved issues that neither of us seemed rubbish. One afternoon, while I was doing laundry, I had a flashback to the night of the threesome. I remembered the way Mark had kissed me, his lips soft but insistent. I could still feel the warmth of his body against mine, the way he made me feel completely desired. The memory was so vivid that it left me breathless. I sank to the floor, overwhelmed by the intensity of my emotions. How could something that felt so good be so wrong? As the days turned into weeks, the emotional turmoil only deepened. Jake's persistence didn't wane, and every time he brought up the topic, it felt like a fresh wound. I tried to talk to him about my feelings, hoping to make him understand the depth of my conflict. Jake, I love you, I said one evening, my voice trembling. I don't want to be with anyone else. I'm committed to you. Why can't you see that? He looked at me with a mixture of sadness and determination. I know you love me and I love you too, but I saw something between you and Mark that I can't ignore. I don't want to hold you back from something that could make you happy. His words stung, but they also added to my confusion. How could he be so willing to share me with someone else? It felt like he was pushing me away and the thought of losing him was unbearable. The fear of what this could do to our marriage was ever-present, casting a shadow over every interaction we had. In the midst of this turmoil, I sought solace in small moments of clarity. There were times when I would sit in our backyard, the cool evening breeze soothing my troubled mind. I would close my eyes and try to center myself, focusing on my love for Jake and the life we had built together. These moments of introspection were fleeting, but they reminded me of what was truly important. Despite the temptation and the confusion, my loyalty to Jake remained steadfast. I knew that pursuing anything with Mark would only complicate things further and potentially destroy the trust that Jake and I had worked so hard to build. But the path forward was unclear and the emotional roller coaster I was on showed no signs of stopping. One particularly difficult night, I found myself lying awake, staring at the ceiling. My mind was a mess of thoughts and feelings, each one more confusing than the last. I turned to Jake who was sleeping peacefully beside me and felt a surge of love and protectiveness. This was the man I had chosen to spend my life with the man who had stood by me through thick and thin. I couldn't let anything come between us. As I drifted off to sleep, I resolved to find a way to navigate this complicated situation without compromising my values or my marriage. It wouldn't be easy, and there would undoubtedly be more difficult conversations ahead. But I was determined to hold on to the love and loyalty that had brought Jake and me together in the first place. No matter how strong the temptation or how confusing the emotions, my commitment to my husband would remain unwavering. One evening, after dinner, I suggested we sit down and talk. Jake could sense the seriousness in my voice, and he nodded. Following me to the living room, we sat on the couch, the tension between us palpable. I took a deep breath gathering my thoughts and summoning the courage to address the issue head on. Jake, we need to talk about what happened with Mark. I began my voice steady but filled with emotion. I can't keep going like this, feeling torn and confused. We need to figure out where we stand and what we want for our future. Jake looked at me, his eyes softening. He took a deep breath and nodded. You're right, we do need to talk. I've been thinking about it a lot too. 
I hesitated for a moment, unsure of how to proceed, but then the words started to flow. When you suggested that I sleep with Mark without you, it really threw me off. It felt like you were pushing me away and I didn't understand why. I need to know where this is coming from and what you really want. Jake sighed and ran a hand through his hair. I'm sorry for putting you in this position. I thought that by encouraging you to explore things with Mark, I was being open and supportive, but I realize now that it wasn't fair to you. He paused, looking down at his hands. The truth is, I've been feeling really insecure. Seeing you connect with Mark in a way that we haven't connected in a while, it made me feel like I wasn't enough for you. His admission caught me off guard. I had suspected that there might be underlying issues, but hearing him voice his insecurities made my heart ache. Jake, you are enough for me, I said softly, reaching out to take his hand. I love you, and I don't want anyone else. The threesome with Mark was a one-time thing, and I don't want it to go any further. I'm committed to you. Jake squeezed my hand, his eyes glistening with unshed tears. I know you love me and I love you too. But seeing you with Mark brought up all these feelings of inadequacy. I thought that maybe if I encouraged it, I could somehow be a part of it and not feel so left out, but it backfired. I didn't enjoy seeing how much you enjoyed being with him, and it's been eating me up inside. Tears welled up in my eyes as I listened to his words. Jake, you should have told me how you were feeling. We need to be honest with each other about our insecurities and fears. Pushing me towards Mark only made things more complicated and painful for both of us. He nodded, his expression filled with regret. I know, I should have talked to you about it. I'm sorry for putting you through this. I see now that it was a mistake. We sat in silence for a few moments, both of us processing the weight of the conversation. Finally, I spoke up. I think the best thing we can do right now is to cut contact with Mark. It's clear that his involvement has caused more harm than good, and we need to focus on us. Jake agreed. You're right. We need to distance ourselves from Mark and work on our relationship. I want to rebuild the trust and connection we have. I want us to be strong again. I nodded, feeling a sense of relief and clarity. Me too. Let's commit to each other and make our relationship a priority. We can get through this together. Over the next few days, we took concrete steps to distance ourselves from Mark. Jake sent him a message explaining that we needed to cut ties for the sake of our marriage. Mark was understanding, though disappointed, and agreed to respect our decision. It was a difficult but necessary step, and it felt like a weight had been lifted off our shoulders. With Mark out of the picture, Jake and I focused on rebuilding our relationship. We scheduled regular date nights, took long walks together, and made a conscious effort to communicate more openly about our feelings and needs. I smiled, squeezing his hand. We are Jake, we faced some tough challenges, but we're coming out stronger on the other side. I love you and I'm committed to us. As the days turned into weeks, our relationship continued to improve. We rekindled the passion and intimacy that had brought us together in the first place. Our sex life flourished as we focused on each other, exploring new ways to connect and satisfy each other. The threesome with Mark became a distant memory, a lesson learned about the importance of boundaries and communication. There were still moments of doubt and insecurity, but we faced them together, supporting each other through the ups and downs. Our commitment to each other never wavered and we grew more confident in our ability to navigate whatever challenges came our way. Reflecting on our journey, I realized that the experience had brought us closer in unexpected ways. It forced us to confront our insecurities and communicate more openly. It reminded us of the importance of prioritizing our relationship and being honest about our needs and fears. Through it all, our love for each other remained the foundation that kept us strong. As we sat on the porch, watching the stars appear in the night sky, I felt a deep sense of peace and gratitude. We had faced a difficult trial, but we had emerged stronger and more connected. I knew that no matter what the future held, we would face it together with love, trust, and unwavering commitment. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so and hit the notification bell to stay updated with more shocking real-life stories happening around you.